Welcome to Wortley Village. As usual, this video is designed as an aid to exploration. Log off the computer, pull up this video on your phone, and go for a walk. Each time I'm done talking about a building, I'll throw up a map to get you to the next one. Pause the video and take a stroll. Indeed, feel free to wander off script for a while. I'll still be there when you get to the next site, and there's always another side street to explore. Wortley Village began its life as a residential outgrowth of London in the 1850s, as wealthy Londoners erected their houses on large, semi-rural plots of land south of the Thames River. Over the coming years, the area developed slowly, with the heart of the village being divided into building plots, but the area retained its wealthy character, with only a handful of churches and other institutional structures dotting the otherwise exclusively residential streets. The development of the area proceeded slowly, prodded along by the extension of London's streetcar system in 1889 and annexation to the city in 1890. Around the same time, the first commercial structures in the area appeared at the intersection of Wortley and Craig Street, known as Shaw's Corners. That nucleus would later develop into today's Wortley Village. Our walk today begins at the intersection of Wortley and Elmwood. The impressive Victorian building on the southeast corner of Wortley and Elmwood was built in 1899 as the London Normal School. Designed by Francis Heeks, the structure is a fine Romanesque building whose tower dominates Wortley Village and whose stone carving is well worth exploring. The facility served a double role as an elementary school and a teacher training facility, with about 1,200 teachers graduating from the program over its 58 years of operation. The establishment of the Normal School in London, only the third in the province, helped to cement London's position as the educational centre of the region, and by 1958 the teacher training facilities were relocated to a site closer to the University of Western Ontario. Subsequently, the building was reused briefly as a high school and later for offices. Recently, the Normal School has received an extensive restoration in preparation for its new role as the home of Wortley Village's YMCA. Walk a block south on Wortley Road to Duchess, then turn right, walking a block west on Duchess Avenue. The church on the northeast corner of Duchess and Cathcart was built as St. Martin's Roman Catholic Church by the firm of Moore and Monroe in 1912. The parish was London's third Catholic parish, built to serve the growing community in London's South End. Immediately to the east of St. Martin's Church, St. Martin's Catholic School was erected to complement the church in 1930 and has been an active Catholic school ever since. Turn right and walk a block up Cathcart Street to Elmwood. At Elmwood, turn left and walk west. You're looking for the small church set back from the street on the south side of Elmwood. Elmwood Avenue Presbyterian Church was founded in 1925 by members of Knox Presbyterian, outraged at the decision of that congregation to join the new United Church of Canada. The new parish purchased Woodlawn, an 1877 residence, on a large lot, and erected their new church next to the residence in 1926. The original residence survives as the church's Sunday school and church hall. Continue walking west on Elmwood Avenue to Edward Street. Turn right, walking a block north on Edward to Bruce, right again, walking a block east on Bruce to Teresa, and then left, walking a block north on Teresa to Askin Street. Wesley Knox United began its life as the New Brighton Methodist Church, a wood frame structure erected in 1875. The congregation grew along with the surrounding area, and five years later, in 1880, they hired Samuel Peters, London's first resident architect, to design the present elegant structure. At the same time, the congregation was renamed the Askin Street Methodist Church. The Salvation Army traces its Canadian roots to a meeting held in the church in 1882. Absorbed into the 1925 Union of Canada's Presbyterians and Methodists, in 1972 the parish merged with Knox United and elected to adopt a new name honouring the founders of both Methodism and Presbyterianism. Turn right, walking east on Askin Street. You're looking for the large church on the south side of Askin Street. St. James Westminster traces its roots to 1869, when an Anglican congregation was established in the South End. The present buff brick Gothic structure was erected eight years later, in 1877, to plans by the London architectural firm of Robinson and Tracy. The parish's tower has been a neighbourhood landmark from the moment it was constructed, while the remainder of the church has been expanded repeatedly, most notably in 1897 and 1927, when the parish hall to the west was constructed. Continue east along Askin Street to the intersection of Askin and Wortley Road and turn right. Starting in the 1890s, this block of Wortley Road developed into a commercial strip serving local needs. The intersection of Wortley and Askin was once known as Shaw's Corner, a name which dates to the establishment of a grocery store and post office on the southeast corner of the intersection by George Shaw in 1872. 
Later, the area came to be known as New Brighton, and more recently as Wortley Village. Continue south along Wortley Road. On the west side of the street, you'll see the former Wortley Road Baptist Church, built in 1896 and since converted into apartments. Stop at the intersection of Wortley and Bruce. The recent apartment building, on the southeast corner of Wortley and Bruce streets, stands on the site of Knox Presbyterian. The area of Scots were late to establish a congregation, with Knox Presbyterian not being established until 1883. In that year, however, they engaged architect George Duran to design a substantial brick Gothic building which would house the congregation for its entire existence. In 1925, Knox Presbyterian voted to join the newly established United Church of Canada, prompting the establishment of Elmwood Avenue Presbyterian by a dissenting group at the parish. Knox United merged into Wesley Knox in 1972, and the structure went through several new owners before being demolished. Walk a few doors east on Bruce Street. You're looking for 160 Bruce Street on the north side. The building at 160 Bruce was built in 1891 as the number three fire hall. The city had promised fire protection to the area as part of the negotiations leading to the 1890 annexation. The outline of the double doors for the fire trucks can still be seen on the structure's facade. On the east side of the building, you can see the base of the building's tower poking out of the roof. At one point, the tower was used both to house the fire bell and to dry hoses after use. At this point, you could return to Wortley Road and walk a block south on Wortley to return to the beginning of the walk. If you're interested, however, several of the area's original estates survive to the east. Continue east on Bruce Street to Marley Place, then south a block on Marley to Elmwood. Turn left on Elmwood. As you pass, note 198 Elmwood Avenue, a simple Georgian residence built in 1848 and one of the oldest structures surviving in the neighborhood. Cross Rideout Street and walk half a block south to Grand Avenue. You're looking for the elaborate Victorian residence at 10 Grand Avenue. Waverley was built by Charles Goodhue in 1882. Goodhue was the son of George Jarvis Goodhue, London's first millionaire. And while Charles had occupied the site since 1866, it wasn't until his father's death that the money existed to erect a large residence on the site. Charles Goodhue engaged London architect George Duran to design the residence, and Durand appears to have taken full advantage of the opportunity to indulge his taste for the picturesque and the ornate. The house was dramatically expanded to the rear in 1898 when it came into the possession of oil magnate Thomas Smallman, and today serves as a retirement home. Immediately to the east of Waverley is Idlewild, erected in 1879 for Charles Hyman, and expanded several times since. Charles Hyman was a prominent liberal politician at the turn of the century, and a close friend of Wilfrid Laurier until his death in 1926. Hyman was a successful cabinet minister, most notably as Minister of Public Works, and at one point was widely regarded as Laurier's natural successor as Prime Minister. His residence's various expansions interact to give it an eclectic appearance. Continue east a block on Grand Avenue to Belgrave Street. The southeast corner of Grand and Belgrave was once the site of the McCormick Mansion. Erected in 1883 to plans by Samuel Peter and Son, the towered Victorian residence was one of London's largest residences, built for the man who had founded McCormick's Biscuits, a successful London confectioner. The Queen Anne residence was demolished in 1914, when no buyer could be found for a house of such enormous size, with the property being divided up into building plots. Turn left, walking a block south on Belgrave Street to Tecumseh Avenue. The school on the southeast corner of Belgrave and Tecumseh is London South Collegiate Institute, built in 1927. The first high school in the area had been established in 1921, but for six years the school had been housed in temporary quarters in a former elementary school on Askin Street. The school originally boasted 13 classrooms, with an additional nine classrooms being added a year after the school opened. Walk a block east on Tecumseh Avenue to Langley Street. The school on the southwest corner of Langley and Tecumseh is Tecumseh Public School. Built in 1915 to plans by London architects Watt and Blackwell, the school was one of three London schools designed by the firm that year the others being Aberdeen and Boyle Memorial, both in London's East End. The three schools were near identical structures, boasting a simple classical facade. The protruding half-octagon on the east side of the structure was designed as the school's kindergarten. From Tecumseh Public School, walk a block further east along Tecumseh to High Street. Turn left and walk a block north on High Street to McClary Avenue. The house on the southwest corner of High and McClary is the McClary residence, erected in 1864 for John McClary, the founder of McClary Manufacturing, a maker of stoves and other iron products. 
The residence is an impressive Italianate building, topped by an enclosed widow's walk. The two houses immediately to the north, on the northwest corner of High and McClary, were built in 1877 as wedding presents for two of John McClary's daughters. This brings us to the end of our Wortley Village walk. To return to the beginning of the walk, head a block north on High Street to Grand Avenue and turn left. Walk four blocks west on Grand Avenue and following a short jog north on Rideout Street, an additional two blocks west on Elmwood Avenue. Alternately, you could return to Tecumseh Public School and spend the day exploring the pleasant residential streets to the west.